Okay, the book of Luke, chapter 17. That's where we are going to read from. Luke 17, from verse 1 all the way up to verse 6. Luke 17. If you have your Bible. From verse 1 all the way up to seven. All, all, all the way up to verse 6. I hope everybody is there. Okay, I'll read from the King James Version. Okay. The Bible says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a milestone were hanged upon his neck and he cast, and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, Rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee and say, and and, and saying uh, 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 to thee, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Verse 6, and the Lord said, If ye had faith as little as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine root, a uh, sycamine tree, Be thou plugged up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea. And it should obey you. Okay, so I want to just bring this Bible study session for us to speak about faith. Uh, a Bible study lesson I've entitled Increase Our Faith. Because this is what the disciples are asking Jesus. Say, Lord, can you please increase our faith? Okay, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I want to look at faith being provoked. Okay, because we all know what faith is, right? I hope we all know what faith is. Faith is basically believing in something you have not seen. Okay, if it's something you've already seen, it is not faith. In other words, if somebody has promised you a job, then you can't say, I'm, I'm, I'm making faith that I'm going to get a job because you already know what's going to happen, right? But faith is when you are trusting for something that is impossible. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says that it is impossible for us to please God if we don't have faith. And it says that those are that we as believers should have faith and we should believe that he is God. He is who he says he is. And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So in other words, you can't serve God without faith. Because already the mere fact of us believing in God has to take faith. Because how many of you have seen God in person? None of us have seen God, right? None of us have seen the face of God. But by faith, we believe that God is who he is. By faith, we believe that God is all-powerful. Because faith is basically trusting, believing, and hoping in something that you have not yet seen. Hebrews 11 verse 1. <clears throat> Again, there we find the definition of faith in the Bible. That says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. In other words, it's almost like a title deed, right? You have not yet seen a house, but if you have a title deed, then you know the house belongs to you and you know that this is a house because of this little receipt that you're having in your hands. That's faith. Okay, and you hold on to this faith that you know what, regardless of what happens in life, God is still alive and God is still on the throne. 
See, faith is not something that you're already aware of. Faith has to be hopeful. Now, faith being provoked. How is faith provoked? Or how is faith, faith uh, or what is the time that faith has to be uh, activated in our lives? Okay, number one, faith is provoked during times of crossroads. This basically means that in life, as a child of God or as a human being, there will be times whereby you will come at a place and you will be challenged to either have faith in God or just believe either in your human ability or simply give up. And the disciples here in our text, they found themselves at that very place. Because Jesus is telling them something very interesting. He's saying, listen, if your brother uh, does something wrong against you seven times in a day, and he still comes for seven times to you and says, please forgive me, you must forgive him. Now, how many know that's too much? It's almost like the person is playing with your feelings. Imagine I, I offend you, I mock you, I do something bad to you, or I hate you. I go, then I come back and I say, ah, sorry for what I did. You say, okay, I forgive you. And then you insult the, the same day, okay? Not in seven days, in one day, they insult you, they slap you, and then they go away, they come back. Oh, please, I'm very so much sorry. Can you please forgive me? Right? You would feel like the person thinks you are dumb. <laughs> so therefore, the, the disciples, what they ask Jesus is, can you please increase our faith? Because this is too much. And faith gets provoked at crossroads. Or when you need a healing, faith gets provoked. Because now, it's, uh, you either have to trust in God, have faith, or you simply have to, you know, give up or believe in your own human ability. But faith always gets provoked at that time. Sometimes it's when you need financial blessing or financial miracle that you know, hey, if I don't get money, at this time, then it's done. I won't make it. That is the time whereby you have to do what? Yeah. Activate your faith and trust God. Because unless you trust God, <laughs> then nothing is going to work for you. Amen. Or you are going to trust in your human ability. Go to a cash loan. Or probably borrow from somebody. Or there's another option of just having faith in God. The other is things that bring doubt and confusion in our lives. So whenever you come to a place whereby you doubt God or you are confused in your work with God, it will determine whether you'll act in faith or just live the way you want to or, you know, simply just be, depend on your human ability. But you have to decide, you know what, I might be confused. I might not understand what is going on in my life. Because, you know, life doesn't go the way you plan it sometimes. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I had planned my life for myself already. <laughs> you know, everything, okay, from grade 1 up to grade 12, this is what's going to happen. And from here to here, this is what's going to happen. I had my life planned out. Okay? And from here, I'm going to do this. And from this, I'm going to buy this. And I'm going to do this. But, you know, life is full of surprises. Things that you didn't plan might happen, right? <laughs> you know, and uh, while you have planned something, <laughs> it might not come to pass. You know, sometimes people have already planned that, okay, as soon as I'm done with my school, I'm going to work somewhere. <laughs> and you find yourself jobless for 12 months, for a year. And that was not part of your plan. So in during those times of confusion, you have to live by faith. Because the Bible tells us the just shall do what? Shall live by faith. And we walk by faith and not by sight, not by what we are seeing. Okay? Because uh, often what we see can be deceiving. The things that are around you can deceive. So you, don't, you shouldn't walk, amen, based on what you are seeing. You should walk on based on what you believe. And that is what the word of God says. Like even just during this time of coronavirus, people are living in so much doubt and fear. Of course, I do understand we need to take precautions, right? 
but you shouldn't be so much you know uh, 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 in doubt and fear that the coronavirus is somehow uh, 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 the master of your life okay because what you fear or fear will as we will speak about later on fear what it does is it will drain faith out of you okay the more you are afraid of something you start to lose faith see people who had faith they never had fear look at abraham the bible says abraham he walked to a land he doesn't even know there was no fear abraham needed to go sacrifice his son isaac he did not have fear. He took his son and he walked with him. Because people who walk in fear, they can't have faith. Because fear and faith cannot exist in one place. Okay? The disciples of Jesus were confused at this time. That's why they are saying, Lord, please increase our faith. I want to speak about, secondly, misunderstanding what is faith. So we live in a somewhat spiritual world okay people want to spiritualize everything in the in the day and age we live in everything is spiritualized and uh, in this spiritualizing things somehow people who seem to know better they want to look down on others right that you know hey you you are still small in faith me i'm big in faith i saw one one guy, you know, he's recently gotten born again. And this guy, what was claiming was this. He's saying, you know what, look, to be a prophet, it takes powerful faith. It's just, <laughs> just too much, guys. And, you know, I'm telling him, listen, bro, you and a prophet in the eyes of God, you are the same. He's saying, no, 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 no. It cannot be. That is just a different rank. You know, and basically it's this notion whereby Paul believe that, you know what? There is, um, you, you've heard these titles, right? Women of faith. Oh, men of faith. That guy is a man of faith. Oh, that's a woman of faith, right? And somehow they think like, you know what? Some people, who have, some people are just so different from others. But you see, James tells us something different. James speaks about Elijah. And he's telling us, Elijah was a man with passions like us. In other words, what he's trying to communicate with you and me is that there is really no much big difference. We are all humans. It's not like, you know, Elijah was made out of uh, wood or something. <laughs> he was made the same way you and I were created. In uh, James chapter 5, verse 17, listen to what the Bible says. He says, Elias, or Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave the rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So there again, he's trying to uh, make us understand that these guys... We're just human beings like you and I. There was nothing, amen, different or special about them. You know, one thing that even made me to uh, really, because I used to have a problem at first. I used to think, you know what, born again is just for some people. How many of you thought like that before you got saved? You know, me, I don't think I can stay born again. Born again is just for some. You know, some people can be able to, but me, mm -mm, I'm just okay the way I am. But one thing I begin to 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 realize is that, you know what? We are made of same emotions. We are all human beings. We have two eyes. We have two arms, two legs. What's the difference? And the same point he's making there. He's a man with same passions as we are. But he prayed that it should not rain. And it did not rain. Now imagine a normal human being Having same wicked, lustful desires like you and I. He prayed for it not to rain, and it did not rain for a year and six months. <laughs> Some of you are struggling, amen, just to pray for a fly to be healed, <laughs> amen, or a dog. You know, there was an apostle in Sumer who used to heal dogs. <laughs> but 
Anyways, there's this notion of big faith and small faith and, you know, ah, the reason why you're not blessed enough is because your faith is too small. You need to, you need to pray, so, you know. But I believe Jesus here is trying to correct the disciples. Because the disciples are saying, Lord, please increase our faith. That's what they're asking, right? Increase our faith. But Jesus come back and tell them, look, if you have faith as little as a mustard seed. Now, the mustard seed is the smallest seed. Very, very small. Is, if you have faith as little as a mustard, mustard seed, you'll say to, a, to, to, a, to this tree, be plugged up and be planted that side and the tree will obey you. In other words, what he's trying to tell them is, listen, there's nothing like big faith or small faith. All you have to have is faith. Okay? Some people think, man, if I can just have faith of uh, uh, papa or mama or, you know, uh, this prophet or that, if I had that type of faith, then I could do mighty things. No, you, all you have to have is faith. And Jesus is correcting these disciples. Lastly, I want to speak about faith being activated. Now, before I speak about faith being activated, like I said, what deactivates your faith is fear. Whenever you fear something or you have doubts, then your faith in God gets deactivated. Speak about Peter. Here is Peter. The Bible says that Peter was so bold and so brave that he comes to Jesus. They saw Jesus even walking on water. And Peter says, Lord, invite me to walk with you on the water, if it is you. And Jesus tells him, Peter, come and walk with me. And we know that as Peter is walking, the Bible says he's walking on water, he's taking some steps. But the moment he started to fear, he looked around his circumstances and his surroundings. The Bible says that Peter started to sink. And this is the same with, with us as well. The moment you start to look around and your focus is not right, your faith will be derailed and you find yourself sinking. Same way Peter did. But if your focus is right, focus should be on Jesus. Peter did not focus on Jesus. He started to focus on the surroundings. Almost like the time we are living in right now. Many people, their focus is not Jesus anymore. Many people are so much concerned about hand sanitizers. They are concerned about the gloves, about contracting the disease. But many people are not concerned about their spiritual life. See, that's why I said on the group that, you know what, it's not the biggest uh, casualty is not people dying from coronavirus or COVID-19, but the biggest is Christians backsliding. Okay, People don't even care about the churches being closed. They don't care. All they are concerned about is, oh, coronavirus, uh, we are going to die. But nobody's even concerned that, look, the body of Christ is being assaulted. The church is in danger, right? But the biggest focus right now is people are saying, no, 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 health comes first. How I many you know Jesus comes first? Even then our health, amen. Now imagine, of course we know it's the government saying this, and we know the government is saying it for the right reason. But sometimes I wonder, okay, what if the government was... And God forbid, but what if the government was simply to say, you know what, we are just going to close down Pentecostal churches. <laughs> you know, if you attend them, it's illegal. I wonder how people would react. Because many people are so much concerned about their health <laughs> and their safety. And yes, I'm not saying, okay, let's go violate these rules. And, amen. But all I'm saying is, where is our focus? Because your focus, if it's on the surroundings and it's not on Jesus Christ, 
you'll find yourself sinking. And let me tell you, by the way, you know, backsliding does not happen overnight. You don't just wake up one day and, what, my days, I, I, I've just backslidden. <laughs> wow. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. Okay, you might not even realize, just like when you are sinking, you know, some people might be thinking, I'm still on water. I'm still walking. Thank God that Peter was able to realize that, you know what, hey, I'm actually sinking. But some people might not even realize that they are busy sinking and they'll still feel, you know what, I'm still fine. Uh, God still understands. Uh, uh, the, and they find themselves sinking because they don't even pray. Thank God, at least Peter prayed, Lord, save me, I'm dying. He saw himself dying because his focus was not right. And during this time, I will urge you to a faith. Lord, increase our faith, like this disciple said. But what they missed completely was that their faith didn't have to be increased. All they had to do is just have faith in God. Just have faith. Pray for the world. Some of you are feeling like, sure, but pastor, my faith is too small. My prayers are too small for me to pray it's for the whole world. Well, you can. Elijah prayed. In the Bible, says Elijah was a human being like you and I. And that gives me hope. He had passions like you and I. In other words, when I'm saying passions, what he's, what he's talking about is he had, amen, the lustful desires that we have as well. What he's talking about. The fleshly desires that you and I are having. Elijah had the same desires, but still he was able to pray. The Bible says, Amen. A fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And you and I need to get on our knees and start to get our priorities right. Okay? So you know what? Regardless of these things, the best thing is, Amen, for me to be able to make sure my spiritual life is healthy. Just the same way you are so concerned about your physical life being healthy. <laughs> Make sure that your spiritual life also is healthy. That you know, hey, I don't, I don't want after the 21 days of this lockdown or this whatever, you know, I don't want to find myself, I met square one. I want to find myself that because they said, okay, no gatherings, no, no, what, what, I find myself. Because I tell you, uh, um, when we stay at home, there's TV. You know, thank God I don't have TV at my house. There's TV. <laughs> and TV is going to show you a lot of things. They are going to, there's going to be music that uh, you have forgotten about. And you'll find yourself nodding your head. And you remember the song. You know the words already, right? <laughs> you find yourself watching movies. And you know, nowadays movies... There's just a nice, good scenes, you know, it's an innocent movie. Before you know it, people are touching each other. And before you know it, you are wondering. And uh, you are thinking back. So you are like, shoot, I, I, how I wish my boyfriend or my girlfriend was here to hold me like that. Right? Prayer will be derailed. But you see, you and I... In these trying times, we need to have faith in God. You know, I like the quote that Brother Cosley put yesterday on WhatsApp. It says, God is bigger than coronavirus. <laughs> and many people miss this. They just exalt coronavirus. Oh, it's coronavirus. But you see, God is bigger than this. And, you know, if you have faith in God, I'm not saying just be ignorant. Okay, but if you have faith in God, why should you so much amen, be concerned and put all your time and effort? You know, somebody put a link on one of the groups that I'm on that, hey, just SMS uh, uh, to this uh, whose cell phone number, apparently you SMS something and you will get updates on coronavirus cases that are happening anywhere in the world. And people are just updated. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's one more case. Hey, and another case in Angola, another case in, for what? Okay, what will it help you? Will it help you to become smarter? <laughs> I don't think so. But our focus should be on Jesus Christ. He is the author and the finisher 
of our faith. Lord, increase my faith.